Hey, do an interview. <laughs> okay, so it's FatboyRadioNYC.com, and we're bringing back two guests that we had back in 09. I remember that day. I think it was a fashion show going on, and I was wearing a suit. <laughs> Don't ask me why. I was watching the interview trying to, you know, you know, try to relive. It was a pretty dope interview. Trying to get your puff daddy on. Hey, <laughs> you guys got jokes? <laughs> You've been saving that joke for like two, three years? <laughs> no, man, you were looking sharp. You gotta talk. You gotta call, talk directly to the mic, man. Oh my bad. You were looking. You were looking sharp. It was. It's all good. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we have Jade and we have. Hello. Jonathan. John. I, I didn't know whether to call you John. I don't think it's, I was he, too familiar yet. No, it's all good. People call me all kinds of names. People. Some people call me just Carmelli. Some people call me John. Some, my mother calls me. Jonathan, like in a loud screeching voice. I know, man. Later. I have to <laughs> We have blind Benny. What's up, guys? I'll be muted. Thanks for having us. Once again. Again. Thank you. Three years later. That's so cool. Were you waiting for us to invite you again? Yeah. yeah. Hopefully not. We don't invite ourselves. Only. Well, you know, you know. We the only spot. steal people's emails. Yeah. And cold call them. That's true. We okay, so that. when we had you in '09, you guys were just a singer and a producer thing. You combined that mm-hmm. into Blind Benny. So how's that been so far? Um, it has been a delight. Uh, it's basically, you know, it's funny, we actually worked the same way, um, uh, on the first, on the first album, on the It's My Heart Cookie. Um, Mm -hmm. the difference was that we were trying to push Jade instead of, like, the band. I mean, it's not even a band necessarily, it's just us, but, like, it's, it's like we changed it into an idea or a name or something, because it's easier to kind of get, I feel like it's easier for people to understand something like that, um. And you don't deal with a lot of silliness. Like, I always say this, but, like, I feel like there's a stigma um, with people, especially, like, especially for a single female artist who is attractive and can sing. Um, I I feel like there's certain... There's certain things that people don't necessarily warm up to. Like, for example, if she can write amazing songs also, it's like, oh, who is this girl? She has to be someone. Someone has to be writing her stuff. Someone has... And so, when you're a band, it's easier to kind of... Do what uh, you want. Do what you want, yeah. Cool. And did you have any of those allegations before that or whatever? Well, um... We were really only... Ex- not only accepted, but we were, we were really being pushed as, like, pop or... Um... You know, we were opening for, like, all these rappers, which is awesome. Um, and I just became this, like, this kind of um, urban, urbanish icon. But I didn't really want it to be about that. I really wanted it to be about the music um, rather than my image. What type of rappers are you opening up for? Um, Consequence, um, Mickey Fax, Slick Rick. Um, cool Kids. Cool Kids. I mean, we'll open up for Cool Kids anytime. Cool Kids are they're family. Friends, yeah, they're friends of ours. I thought you were, like, open up for Cameron, yo. Like, you have to open up for Cameron. Like, that's a hard stage. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, doing, you're doing the songs about It's My Hard Cookie. And all of a sudden, you know, you have all these dudes with bandanas and baggy pants. It's just a Smoking nightmare. Smoking weed at SOB. But, but uh, you know, it's funny, big, but that's exactly what you're describing. Like, even though it's not Cameron, that was basically the situation. That's basically our um, Was that we're doing that. And even though people are accepting... Like, we would do shows, and it's like, let's say we're the only thing that's not rap in a, in a rap show and we'd have people and who'd be like oh wow you guys are awesome and whatever but they're not really going to check us out they're just there to see other rappers like they're not you know they don't care so it you know we just kind of hit a point that we was like it it's not really worth it to keep trying to push this thing it's we got to change it up somehow so now you guys are just headlining your own shows and just doing your own shows right yeah we hustle really hard so at uh brooklyn bowl we opened for the cool kids we opened for cool kids that was still a really cool show but yeah. then you know we like to group with other bands like maybe body language or bands like us because what happens is is you get a you know you get a larger fan base your fan base expands mm-hmm. people are like oh i like this band and this band is like me also you know i'll listen to them also that's kind of how indie music works okay so since it's my heart it's my heart cookie you dropped this Lucid EP. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so what's up with that? Um, well, that is, um, I wish he was here, but he just went to L.A. for a few months, Jason Scott. Mm-hmm. He pretty much uh, daddies all the remix projects. He gets a bunch of DJs um, from around the country, 
um, to do remixes to all of our uh, all of my vocal stems, some of like John's guitar licks. And Daddy, whatever. Daddy's is a technical term that we use. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I don't know what that is. So it's yeah. my hard cookie. It's a very good product. Like, it's dropped a while ago, but I still could bump it. Thank you. Yeah. Now, Puerto has a smile on his face because he's probably bumping it recently. I <laughs> bump it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's such, that's such a compliment. Thank you. It's a great project, and, like, it was mad funny because I think one of my friends found you on Twitter the other day, and she was like, oh, I've been looking at, I've been looking for you since 09. I'm like... Yo, you get up our project. This is my project right here. <laughs> this is my project right here. I'll be bringing it back. I'll be listening to it. Walking, it's, it's great walking in the rain music. Don't yeah. judge me. I'm not soft. <laughs> no, no, no. It, 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 it's it's like headphone music. It's headphone music. It definitely, uh, it definitely is. But take, no, the hit, gonna... but take the hit is kind of hard though on stereos. I just let you know that. Yeah. I'll be wild. That's what he said. Take the That's hit. what he said. <laughs> okay. Take the we hit. have an internal <laughs> argument that I. I also produce Take the Hit, but I think Take the Hit is amazing. I think Jade's writing is amazing. Jade doesn't care, I guess, because it's old. I mean, she likes it, but, like, she's on to the next. I think it's a... It's my jam. Are you the type of artist that hates when people bring up, like, old music? No, I don't hate it. I find it a comp... You know, I find it flattering. But I have um, a necessity to constantly do new songs. Okay. Like, with John and I, we just came from a rehearsal. Um, I rubber tracks and... I want to do a new song. We're, we're, we're actually performing at Bari Electric this coming Tuesday on the 13th at 9. Funny. Yep. That's a good point. And, um, I told you. I all see, all the information was there. That was I good. I you coming. <laughs> and, um. Holy, she just plugged that in. <laughs> that talent. Thank you. Okay, so, Blind Benny, they were talking about movies. Like, what's so great about this? What is it? Share Shake Redemption? What Shawshank Redemption. Okay. What wow. is this? Wow. Share Shake <laughs> Redemption. <laughs> the Bear Shake Redemption. Okay, so what's up with this movie, man? Let's get down. Shawshank? To, yeah, man. He like, didn't, seriously? He didn't see it. He didn't see it. Oh my god, really? He never, yeah, he, he never so saw it. The second interview in the room that someone has called me up on this. Like, yo, you have like 10 seconds to convince me why I should watch this movie. It's Morgan awesome. Freeman. Done. Go <laughs> see it. <laughs> I don't know how, how to feel about Morgan Freeman. I think he was messing with that Asian girl that he was actually that he actually adopted. So okay, Asian well this is this is pre Asian adopted Asian girl. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. He was also messing with an adopted Asian girl? Like Woody Allen? Yeah, man. Like they both are into that same thing? Oh wait, wait, that was just Woody. But I think Morgan Freeman is messing with his granddaughter or something. Yeah, I know I, I think you're right. Yeah, I just with got, his granddaughter? Yeah, no, it's something. Like, no, he's right. He's right. It's something slightly weird. I know it's weird. Yeah. Well, I'm just gonna say, like you know, Fap, people at Fapper Radio, we don't do that. <laughs> we're against that. Okay, so we're gonna bring you fast forward because now I just saw this promo for this video called No Honor. Yep. Mm -hmm. What's up with that? It's um, it's this first single to our new EP, which is uh, six tracks. And also, the, also titled the No Honor. Also titled No Honor, and the difference between this one and the original It's My Heart Cookie is every single instrument is live and organic. So how long did it take you to record this? Uh, four months, three months. Yeah, longer, longer in actual time, just because it was hard to find studio time. Like we were going through a really weird, like transitional period. I hate that, and like so, looking for a new studio is like the worst thing in the world. Yeah, like that took a long time, and then our our engineer actually got kicked out of his spot. Like uh, he left or whatever what happened. It, it, like we kind of got dis displaced, like refugees, like halfway through the recording process. And then uh, Jade was getting a new apartment, which took forever. I renovated my first apartment. Yeah, swag. Give you a. No, you okay. have no idea. It was like hoarders in that place. That's not even an exaggeration. It was like, what, are you a hoarder, Jade? No, 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 she got the place no. like that. Oh, no. whoa. Sorry. Jade so, was like anti-hoarder. So where there's like a creepy guy in the, in the corner, like hidden? Like, how no, bad it was, was it? There were shelves. There were shelves and rat feces and... Oh, gosh. It, oh, was not, it wasn't livable. No, I mean like... It took us six months five months to renovate it. Every Our square house. inch of the walls were covered in shelves. So we ripped everything Literally. out, so there really weren't any walls to look at. How upset were you when the scale of 1 through 10? 
Well, the the my neighbor who moved, um, who helped me renovate it, she saw potential in it, and it's actually a really nice three bedroom right now. You'd never with, know. Like if you saw you it now, you would never know. Never even with guess. really high ceilings and huge windows and all new appliances, so and a washer and dryer. So um, yeah, like I watch hoarders, and it just it's just so creepy. It is creepy. Yeah. Especially I know you experienced it firsthand. I would have been very upset. <laughs> I was mean, like, yo, man, whatever you going on, whatever's going on with your life, get over it, get out of here, clean this up. I heard about this one person that collected diapers. Ew. Dirty diapers or clean diapers? Dirty diapers. Ew. If I was going to say it was clean diapers, I would have, I wouldn't be as disgusted. <laughs> okay, in, in, in fairness to that person, because I'm the one who told you that, because I was watching the episode, she wasn't collecting them so much as she just was like, such a hoarder she didn't throw anything out so she was just throwing them in. but she wasn't like oh we got a fresh bat <laughs> like, <laughs> so she wasn't here. that bad as bad as no it was it was, it was bad it was terrible it was, it was awful like in I every said, way she was collecting dirty diapers <laughs> on, why, why are Benny's in here man <laughs> turn off the AC <laughs> okay so John please continue that conversation that you were having with the Lady Gaga conversation yes my, I mean, my biggest thing about her, like, I don't hate on her as a performer or anything, or even as a songwriter. Like, I, what I, like you said, like, she's a, she's a businesswoman first, and she knows, like, she puts these singles out, like, she knows what's good. Like, she's a good enough artist that she knows what's good. And at the end of the day, like, it's not, a, it's not about the music. And she knows it's not about the music. It's about the big machine. It's about making that money. And... So for me, it's like my only thing is like she's a good enough artist to know that that's what's that's what's up, and then sells that fakeness back. Mm -hmm. I guess if she's like a crappy artist, it's like oh yeah, you know what you're doing, like Jason Derulo or something. Like you you know you're. Why does anybody hate Jason Derulo? I don't even listen to Jason Derulo. That's why you don't hate him. Well, what like what I I think one song what was the <laughs> the popular song that he had that broke out? That He's got a couple, out. but he's a goofball. He is a goofball. Yeah. I watch his videos and I don't even want to. I don't even want to like you know look at it. Because he's not like he's not a real artist. He was just like someone was like, oh, you look good, you can sing, you can kind of dance. Let's package you, and that's exactly what happened. So how do you feel about the whole Chris Brown thing nowadays? Chris Brown can dance his dance. pants off. Tell him what you said. Tell about, him what you said about Chris Brown. Oh, I said that Chris Brown always. Uh, I said I don't understand why Chris Brown always looks like he's about to fight robots in the year 2025. No, that, that, that <laughs> always he does this. Horrible. He does this all the time. Though when he was in the tight pants that. and there's like cartoon figures on the back. I don't get. I don't. Really get I don't it. get it. Like yeah. I know you like graffiti, but he's in space with a tight suit with with cartoon alien. It doesn't even make sense. He should make an album called Adventures of Pluto Nash. He should. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid that you might just come to my house and beat me up. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. I was telling Jade, I was like, I was kind of more in the middle until I read that police report, and then I was like, wow, like I don't think Rihanna's innocent, but I was like, that police report is too crazy. It is. That's it's too overboard. There's nothing unless she had a gun. You can't justify that. No, he can't. Not at all. And like, it's like his music is not bad, but he's always taking that hit, and he's always surprised. And he's also, like, like he's doing interviews. He's like, "Oh man, why do people keep bringing up that I beat up my girlfriend? Because you beat up your girlfriend." And he's not even him. chill about it. Like he get, he, you see him get angry and like blow up, and you're just like, "All right, you're just proving my point." Like, like did you see that Good Morning in America? <laughs> yeah. That infamous picture. It was cold in NYC that day, and he was outside with a ripped T-shirt, looking like the Hulk. I was like, "Yo, man." It's cold. <laughs> <laughs>